What's up everybody, it's Kevin here from Happy Beard Games and you're watching HBG TV's special of Cribs. We are checking out my game room for the rest of 2022 and on to 2023. Let's check this out. Heading down the hallway right now to the game room. Where is it? I don't know. Let's find out. We're in the room. Wow. Now in today's video, we'll check out everything in this game room. So there will be some uh, surprises, some shocks, some thrills. It's exciting to see all my collected junk based on retro video games and movies and toys and comics and video games and all that good stuff. You might find this interesting. Um, so yeah, this is a game room tour. We're checking it out today here on Happy Beard Games. Expect retro video games, toys, collectibles, movies, memorabilia, nostalgia, all that good stuff. Let's check out this video today on Kevin's Happy Beard Games Room Tour 2022. Now we're starting with video games once again because this is a game channel, it's a game room, and I'm assuming that's what you'd want to see first. Uh, so we're leaving the top, like the very top of the shelves off, we'll do that afterwards after we move on towards the next part of the room. So without any further ado, let's just jump in with the games. Alright, so now we're at the top, very first shelf of the game room. You can see it's got a lot of Sega stuff on it, that means it's the Sega shelf. We've got the Sega shelf here, we've got a really cool Sonic the Hedgehog figure, this is a newer uh, toy of it, but behind that, what he's holding up is important too. Uh, this is something that I've just started collecting very recently in this year, and that is Sega Game Gear games. So we've got Sonic Chaos, which I haven't really checked out too much of yet. We've also got Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, which I'm doing a review of this game very soon. And in this Game Gear case that, surprisingly, I've actually had this case since I was a kid. We've got a very faded copy of Sonic the Hedgehog 2, the Game Gear version. Moving along the shelf, we've got this right here, which is Sonic and Knuckles 3 collection, which comes with Sonic 3, Sonic and Knuckles, and Sonic 3 and Knuckles games. Uh, this was actually released by Jack in the Box, or at Jack in the Box, back when Sega had some PC games at a deal that you could get only at Jack in the Box restaurants. And later on in the video, when we get down to the Dreamcast, you'll see that I have at least one more Sega game for PC Windows. Right here we've got a notable game, Sonic and Knuckles, with the cart that opens up to attach onto Sonic games. We've also got the Sega Genesis uh, mini edition, or classic edition, mini console. We've also got these two, which are Happy Meal uh, LCD video games based on Sonic the Hedgehog and Shadow the Hedgehog, different characters. Up here we've got the Dreamcast VMU. I don't know why I have it separate from my Dreamcast section, but I do. Um, I've also got this, which is not Sega, but it's a Digimon Digivice from, like, a Tamagotchi. And then for these collections, on these big collections like Sega Genesis, or if I go to my Super Nintendo or NES, I'm just going to pick out three games that are notable to me for those collections. So first of those three games for Sega Genesis is Castlevania Bloodlines. This is a really awesome game in the Castlevania series, and I love this one so much that I had to get the actual cart. I got this at Portland Retro Game Expo 2019 from my buddy Marcus from Sunset Hotline channel on YouTube. Here's another game that I really like on Genesis, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. It's a really cool uh, side-scrolling platformer game where you use your own Michael Jackson dance moves and music to defeat the bad guys. And it's actually a lot more fun than you might expect. It has an amazing soundtrack on the Genesis, Moonwalker. 
And this one's new to me and notable, and I really like this game a lot. I played it last October. That is Haunting, starring Polterguy. And it has that different style cart, but it is for Sega Genesis, if you don't know. And this is uh, the EA game style cart. All the EA games have this style cart, as far as I know. Haunting, starring Polterguy is a really cool game. Okay, so we're moving on down the list here with the next section, which is actually just boxes. I know, I had an extra shelf, so I just put my boxes on there. The notable things on this shelf are there's a Sonic Christmas uh, special DVD, which is based on the uh, original Sonic show. Um, you've also got all my Sega games that have boxes, which are from Altered Beast down to Miss Pac-Man. Um, you've also got these, which are Atari 2600 games, all the way from Air Sea Battle to Empire Strikes Back, which has the coolest case of them. Uh, and then these three are Intellivision games. I don't have an Intellivision console, but I have a few games for Intellivision. I think I have, like, maybe ten. And some of them have their boxes, so these are the boxes for Intellivision games. They're a little bit different than your Atari games boxes, but they're kind of similar. Same era, Atari and Television and ColecoVision were uh, some that were big back in the day. I also have a couple Coleco games, too. Um, so those are Armor Battle and Space Armada, which is their answer to Space Invaders. And I don't know, is Armor Battle their answer to combat? I'm not sure. I, I haven't played Armor Battle yet. Or maybe I have, but I don't think I have. And then, yeah, there's combat, which everybody should have combat. This Atari box is notable, too, because I don't actually have the cart... And to get it out, I would have to, like, move all these amiibo. Uh, but it's uh, Video Olympics, which everybody remembers Atari with Pong. Well, there's no Pong on Atari. There's Video Olympics, which is basically, like, a whole bunch of Pong games. Uh, Pong was its own separate console before the Atari 2600, but people get those mixed up for some reason. So there's no actual game called Pong on the Atari. Uh, there's Video Olympics, and I have the box, but I don't have the game. So that's a little weird. I don't know why I haven't picked it up yet. And then we have my Amiibo collection, which is all these guys down here. A couple of these are Brian's. So they got mixed in here and there. Uh, I think Lucario is Brian's. And maybe another one is Brian's. Oh, Fox. McLeod. And that's it. McLeod. Okay, so now we go to the next shelf. All right, we're on to the next shelf of my games. Now, this shelf actually goes two cases deep. So there's a game... And there's a game behind it. So there's so many games on this shelf that I had to double layer them. So they go out pretty far. And there's one that's like right up in there. Star Raiders is up there, which has a unique controller skin that I actually have. And a unique controller too for the Atari. But these are all Atari 2600 games. And I think behind them there might be um, my Intellivision games. And a couple ColecoVision games, which are baseball and football, I believe. Uh, I could dig them out, but it's just kind of hard to get back there, and the reason why they're back there is because I don't have room for them, but also I don't even have an Atari, a television, and I don't, <laughs> I don't even have an television, and I don't have a ColecoVision, and I don't plan to get them in the near future. But I do have them kind of sorted with the Atari games, so all the ones that actually have labels are out on the front, some of them behind it do too, but they're like duplicate games. Uh, Demon Attack is one of those iMagic games. Or iMagic, whatever you want to call it. iMagic games is what I call it. Uh, it has a different type of cart. And then you've got games like Spider-Man and Empire Strikes Back, Frogger, and Qbert, which are Parker Brothers games for the Atari 2600. They have a different cart design, and they say Parker Brothers on the back, engraved into the cart. I've got a couple other ones, like one that's a unique color card is Donkey Kong. Up here I've got some manuals for Atari games and the Atari, like, advertisements. Uh, and over here I've got some other old school stuff, maybe not quite as old school as the Atari, but I've got some floppy disks from the 90s. I've got Microsoft Return to Arcade, Pack and Time, here's a big one, the Simpsons Arcade game, pretty cool by Konami, uh, Pack and Time Disk 2, and I've got Space Invaders with sound. Whoa. And over here I've got my only 5200 game, the Atari 5200, which has bigger carts and not cannot play, you know, 2600 or 7800 games. Uh, this one was a gift from Leon House on YouTube, so go check him out too. And somewhere on here I have one 7800 game for Atari 7800. And that game is Exevious. I don't know much about the 7800 except for that it can also play 2600 games. 
And I think the graphics quality is a little bit closer, another step closer to the Nintendo NES's graphics. So uh, I don't think it's quite as good as the NES's graphics, but it's close. And it has Xevious, which, you know, Xevious is also on the NES as well. And then when I do these shelves, I like to have things that are related to them on the empty space of the shelf. So I've got these two Atari joysticks, which are actually, um, they hold gum. They came with gum inside them. I've got some Nintendo trading cards from Super Mario Bros. 3. I've got this uh, cool Nintendo ad that came with one of my I've also got Nintendo tattoos, an Atari sticker down here, and a little computer with an Atari game based on Gremlins that came with a Gremlins action figure. All right, now we're getting to the Japanese import games, which you'll know and might recognize many of them from my Famicom Fridays series, which I do quick plays and live streams on Famicom Japan region games uh, every Friday. So, with this, we've got on this shelf, I'm not able to point to them at this part of the video because it's down so low, so I'll just do a zoom in of the games that are notable. We've got... These games right here, which are games from the Famicom original, you know, the equivalent of the Nintendo NES, the original Famicom. But for some reason, these games have side labels. Not every Famicom game. In fact, a majority of them do not have side labels. So we've got Xevious, which I mentioned there. All the Konami games, I think, uh, have side labels. So you've got Goonies 2 and Kung Fu from Konami. Uh, these other ones, Dragon Buster, Xevious, and... Yeah, just those two have are from Namco. And then um, Dragon Ball and Gundam are from uh, Bandai, I think. I think. I could be wrong about that. And Which is funny because Bandai and Namco fuse together now today. Uh, and then we've got another Konami game, which is Gradius. Or Gradius, however you want to pronounce that. Now, I sorted these cards at one point by like color, but I haven't done that yet since I moved in. So these are uh, just carts with black on the side, and the cart case is black, or maybe white too. And then we've got all the color, different rainbow ones, and we've got some more over here. I don't have a good way to display my Famicom games, uh, other than like I can make like a rainbow out of the side of the color, or I could match the colors, or something like that. Uh, but for the most part, there's not a really good way to do that. And I'll get to that point in a little bit, because there's a reason why I said that. Uh, there's also a Pac-Man uh, metal tin there where it has like a Pac-Man maze on the front. I think it came with like Pac-Man shorts or something. Uh, down here I've got my only Famicom game with a box. And that game is um, Adventure in the Otaku Galaxy. Which is a game that um, it's pretty much kind of self-explanatory. But you're an otaku that has to search for five beautiful women. And it's a kind of plays like Earthbound or Mother as it's known in Japan, it's very similar to Earthbound the way it plays. So it's kind of a cool game. It's kind of like a little gem, a weird game. I wouldn't say it's as good as Earthbound, but it's kind of got a different style of humor, but it still plays like an Earthbound game, like almost exactly. It's not so much like Dragon Quest. It's a little bit like Dragon Quest, but it's a little more like Earthbound, I'd say. Here's a notable game for the Nintendo Famicom that some people don't know exists. Jim Henson's Labyrinth. Yes, it's based on the movie. It's pretty accurate to the movie, too. It has a lot of the music from the movie. And it has a lot of the characters from the movie and retells the story and it's a lot of fun. Labyrinth for the Nintendo Famicom. Over here are some other notable games for the Famicom. And I have two of these. This is the first one outside of the sequel. They have bigger cart sizes for some reason. They're called Famicom Jump Carts. They're based upon the magazine and manga series from Japan known as Shonen Jump. Shonen Jump is a magazine that you get monthly or weekly, which has different manga stories within, including Dragon Ball, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, uh, let's see, Dr. Slump, and uh, another a couple other things in there that I'm more familiar with, but a lot of them I'm not familiar with. So if you recognize any of these anime characters on this cover, they're included in the game. So you can, you can recognize JoJo characters, Dragon Ball characters, and so on. These are all mostly anime characters from the 80s, because it's an 80s game, of course. Uh, but also has, like, Fist of the North Star in it as well. So it's really cool. Alright, so now we're moving on to the Super Famicom, which is the equivalent of the Super Nintendo over in Japan. And these games are these tall gray ones right here. They look like Super Nintendo, but they're a little more curved. They are 
so difficult to store because they are they wobble when you play them uh, when you stack them vertically. So I don't know, is it better to stack it vertically or is it better to stack it this way? I've had better luck with it going this way, where they're on their side, versus that way. So um, it's just kind of a pain in the butt to store and collect Super Famicom games. I love them. I love the games. I love being able to play games from other regions. I love being able to play games from other regions that I normally wouldn't be able to play. Uh, on my Super Nintendo, I can play all these games. And... I don't know, it's just weird. It's weird. They don't stand up very well on a shelf. And they don't look very good because they don't have any end labels. And they look even worse than original Famicom because they're gray. A lot of them are faded now. And they don't come in cool colors. They don't even come in black. So, at least from the ones I have. So remember earlier when I talked about the Famicom and I was like talking about like the end labels? Well, for these, you see all these ones with text on them? That's something I printed out and did myself. That's a DIY project that I did personally. I used a program on my computer to find the right size to fit in the specific part of the Super Famicom cart. It's this part right here on this empty one. See, I didn't get to all of them because I lost the template for the project, which really sucks because now I'd have to like redo the template and then maybe redo all of them. Because I had a good thing going for a while there. And I, what I did was I made the template right to the right size for the Super Famicom carts. I put this little red thing on there so it resembles like Super Nintendo, you know. And then I printed out the text. There was one point where my printer didn't work with the black ink. So some of them have white text. But that's okay. You can still read it. It's better than nothing. And um, that's all I did was just that. I tried doing it with like a pen and writing it out and putting on like a sticker. It didn't look very good, so that's why I decided to do it on a computer. And this is like sticky printer tape, so you can pr print out on a sticker, and it sticks directly on there, and it doesn't peel up or anything. There's no tape involved, it's just a sticker. And I was going to make a video a long time ago about how to make these labels, but I lost the templates on my computer, so I don't have the template file to recreate these anymore. So I'd have to do it from scratch, and I just haven't got around to doing that yet. You can see I've got all these games, and they're all side-labeled appropriately, like Fatal Fury, Rondo and Half, Chrono Trigger, uh, a lot of different games. A lot of my earlier games have the labels. My newer ones are all from here to there, and they do not have end labels. So yeah, I put this Tenshi Muyo action figure here, uh, because I've got Tenshi Muyo in the box for the Super Famicom box. So this thing right here is something that allows you to play... Um, Famicom games on your original Nintendo NES from North America. It's an adapter that clips on Famicom games and it fits them into your NES. Right here I've got this, which is a 3D printed Super Famicom logo. It came with a part that allows uh, Super Famicom games to fit more snugly into your Super Nintendo from North America. Down here I've got a collection of different cards and business cards and stickers from different places that I've been to, including my own, and some other stores that I like to go to. Alright, so now we're moving on to this shelf, which is one of the lowest shelves on the bookcase. This is the Super Nintendo shelf. Super Nintendo is a console that I've had since I was a little kid. It was the very first console I ever got, and it was where I started playing a majority of the video games that I know and love today. It's also some of these games I've had since I was a kid, since back in that day, but only about maybe like 10 of them. Uh, so I've collected a lot over the years, and these are all, I think there's probably like 50 something here. I don't know, it's probably a really bad count, but I'm going to say there's at least 50. Alright, a few notable games from my Super Nintendo collection. This one's not super rare, but I've been playing it a lot recently, and that is Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. Uh, also known as TNG Ninja Turtles 5 Tournament Fighters. Um, it's for Super Nintendo. This is the Super Nintendo version. It has some unique differences compared to the NES and Genesis versions. And I really like this game. It's a fun fighting game for the Super Nintendo. I recommend it. Then we've got another Ninja Turtles game, which is Turtles in Time. Ninja Turtles 4. The classic arcade game comes home to Super Nintendo. And this is just one of those games you gotta have, you gotta play at least once in your life all the way through. It's just one of those games that's a lot of fun. It's pretty much as good as the arcade version, it just doesn't support four players. So if you've got a buddy with you, it makes it even more fun. It makes the experience better. And yeah, I recommend Turtles in Time if you're a Turtles fan, or if you like action, arcade-y, you know, beat-em-up games. 
And yes, we've got my favorite video game of all time, my favorite video game that I own, and that is for the Super Nintendo still. Super Castlevania 4 for the Super Nintendo is my favorite game of all time. I kind of want to buy it again on Super Famicom. And at some point, I would like to get a nicer version of this cart. The only reason I don't want to get rid of this cart is this is the actual cart that I have and played since I was a kid. But even then, I bought it used. You can see there was like a sticker there at one part point. I might be able to clean that off. Uh, some of the back labels ripped, and there's some uh, text. Someone wrote something on the back. I don't know. But yeah, Super Castlevania 4 is my favorite video game of all time. I know I've said that every time I bring it up, but it is Super Castlevania 4. I love this game. It's just the perfect Castlevania, in my opinion. The soundtrack, the way the graphic style is, the sound effects, the way you play it, the mechanics that are unique to this game. It just feels perfect to me. I just love this game. Now let's move on down the shelf a little bit, but wait, not to the next shelf. We've got some Game Boy stuff. I've got my new Game Boy here. Which is uh, the original Game Boy, but it's a black case. I have a custom screen that I built in, or I put together into the Game Boy. Uh, so I replaced the screen, is what I mean. I also replaced the speaker. And yeah, it's uh, Game Boy. It's a classic. I kind of want to replace the screen one more time because I kind of messed up because I'm a noob. Uh, but it still works pretty well. It looks better when it's on versus than when it's off. I've also got another Game Boy. I've also got the original gray Game Boy, so before I upgrade this one, I'll upgrade this one, because this one's damaged uh, to the point of being unplayable. Down here I've got my Game Boy Color, my original Game Boy Color with that cool teal color, or turquoise I guess, and then below it I've got the original uh, Game Boy Pocket that I had as a kid, which the screen is missing. I have the screen somewhere. Over here we've got two Game Boy SPs, Advanced SPs, and then my uh, original... Um, Nintendo DS, or I guess Nintendo 3DS. They actually don't have a, a DS anymore, which is kind of weird. Right here we've got a big boy. We've got the Game Boy Advance Micro, which is a really cool Game Boy Advance only console that is extremely small, extremely portable, has a really great screen, uh, removable screen protectors or space plates, and it's just a really great little handheld. We've got a Diddy Kong trading card. Got my Nintendo 3DS, the 2DS as it's called, uh, which is a flat version of the 3DS with no 3D features. Below it I have a uh, 3DS XL, new 3DS XL, weird name. I've got a Killer Instinct trading card, which I keep because it's near the Super Nintendo collection. Over here I've got some Tiger handhelds. These are all the new ones. These are like reproductions that Tiger came out with in the recent years. Got Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and I've got X-Men behind it. Down here I've got the Super Nintendo Classic Edition, which I have not modded or anything like that, but it's just there. And these are Game Boy sunglasses that are just sunglasses that look like the Game Boy. Pretty cool. Alright, so these are my Sega Dreamcast games. I don't have too many of them. Um, and you can see a couple of those, like Sonic and Knuckles Collection and Sonic CD are actually Windows games made by Sega for back in the day. A couple of games I've got are Coaster Works, Crazy Taxi, Space Channel 5, Star Wars Racer, Sword of the Berserk Guts' is Rage, which is my personal favorite Dreamcast game, and I love that game. Yeah, so I've got Sonic Adventure without the case. And I've got a few more without the case, but here's a notable one that I really enjoy. Evil Dead Hail to the King for the Sega Dreamcast. Really cool. So now you can see I've got my NES Advantage, my other NES Advantage, and the Retrobit Power Stick, which is basically an Advantage that came out in modern times, like just recently in the last few years. Um, it doesn't have the turbo, it doesn't have the thing where it plugs into two ports, but the stick is better, the buttons are better, and they can actually be replaced with Sanwa arcade sticks and arcade buttons. So if I ever want to really get hardcore on NES games, I could change them out. But the buttons that come with it are really good too. And I think they're really nice. Speaking of arcade sticks, I've also got uh, one for the Nintendo Switch and PC right there, that big one. Um, that is something I did a video on a while ago when I first got it. Above that, I've got the Super Advantage for the Super Nintendo. 
uh, which is basically the advantage for Super Nintendo. Got the Nintendo Zapper here in its original gray form. Um, kind of hard to get to on the camera. I've also got see, so much stuff in here. Um, this thing. I've also got this thing, which is a Soul Calibur 2 controller uh, arcade stick. And you know Soul Calibur 2 is multi-platform. This controller works on GameCube, PS2, and Xbox. The cord splits off into three ways, so you can play it on either console. But keep in mind, if you're going to buy that Soul Calibur stick, um, it doesn't work on Nintendo Wii. Even though GameCube games work on the Wii and it can plug into the Wii, it doesn't register. Now, tucked behind all those arcade sticks and some other stuff are my PlayStation 1 games. Um, so I'm not really going to talk about them. There's nothing too notable to see. I have a, um, a loose version of Symphony of the Night, which I really enjoy. And I also have um, Final Fantasy IX, which is my favorite game on the PlayStation. My favorite RPG game is Final Fantasy IX. I love that game so much. I'm not a big fan of 7 or 8, what, but they do hold like special places in my my memories. Uh, but Final Fantasy IX is definitely a game that I really enjoy out of the Final Fantasy games. Final Fantasy VIII was the reason I bought the PlayStation 1. And you can say 7 is an extent of that as well, because I, I wanted to get 7, but by the time I was getting a PlayStation 1, I just decided to get 8. That about wraps it up for this first bookshelf. We're about a third through the video, and as I do this, I realize that I need to speed things up some more. Even though I would like to show every little thing and talk about everything that goes through my mind as I'm going through my room. Uh, we're running low on, low on time. And uh, with that, I don't want the video to go on too long because then people won't want to watch the, the whole thing or watch as much as they can. And I don't want to have to like edit it down too much either. So from after the NES section, which is this big chunk right here, um, we're going to only have one highlight for each little shelf instead of three highlights. But I have a lot to talk about the NES. It's one of my biggest collections. Actually, it is my biggest collections in terms of game amount. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about that for sure. Um, other thing that I wanted to say is, yeah, <laughs> you might notice my hair. This is all filmed on the same day. This is all one continuous um, like shot. This is all one continuous video. Yeah, just just go with it. Go with it. Alright, so without further ado, we got NES games. Uh, let's see, we've got the NES Classic. We've got this really cool figure here, which I really want to show because this is important. This is um, not just something you can pick up at any store. This is from the old Club Nintendo Rewards. I think this was year one or year two, my reward from it. Pretty cool. We've also got the Game & Watch Classic Edition with Mario, and Game & Watch Classic Edition with Legend of Zelda, because they go kind of close to the NES in terms of uh, timeline. I put them with the NES Classic. Got some collectibles back here, some Pixel Mario, Pixel Zelda, Pixel Donkey Kong figures. We've also got this, which I picked up at a convention that I went to. I forget which convention it was. I think it was Wizard World Comic Con. I don't know what year, maybe like 2017 or something in Portland, Oregon. Picked up this. It's a flask. It's a flask. You can pop off the top and drink out of it. I don't think they make these anymore. They might, but I don't think they do. Um, they were made by inkwhiskey.com. And this one's Castlevania style. So it says Castle Vodka. Pretty neat design there. And it's shaped like an NES card, of course. Um... Right here we've got the Power Glove. It's so bad, as they say in the movie The Wizard, which I have that too. But the Power Glove, you may have noticed when I wore it in the past, like way in the past, when I wore it to a convention, I had the cord wrapped around my arm. Well, what I did was I desoldered the wire. I opened it up, desoldered the wire at the specific parts, points and parts, where it needed to be connected to the wire that it's hardwired into for the controller. So I have the controller cables separately. I don't use the power glove. I don't play with the power glove. I use it as a prop. I use it because it's a collectible. 
and I use it as a prop for my videos. That's what I bought it for. So I got it for about $70 on eBay like a couple years ago. No, actually more like four years ago, probably like that. Um, but anyways, I desoldered it. I didn't just cut the wires off randomly. No, I, I, I kept them in nice condition. So I'm not a monster. He's a monster. He destroyed his NES games. Yeah, no, no. This is in good condition, okay? And I keep it in good condition as much as I possibly can. That being said, it is a little rough and beat up over the years, even before I got it. But also, I got it autographed by James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd. Uh, James AVGN is what it's written on there, and I had it signed by him in person on video. So anyways, we've got my NES games here. Uh, I think I have about 150, maybe a little less. When I was doing video games monthly, I had like a list of all the games that I had that I was adding up. That was the last time I actually counted them. And I haven't had video games monthly for like almost a year maybe now. So, those video games, I don't know how much there is. But I've bought and sell, I've sold like three. I sold three of my most expensive complete inbox games for about $200, which was a little low. But I got the money immediately, and I got the money in cash. And that was NES Soccer, 5-screw, NES Pinball, 5-screw, complete in box, both of them. The Soccer one was a little rough on the box. The front cover was had some tears on it. But they are all complete in box, manual, game, a uh, little foam, NES foam. Everything was complete. So I traded those in. I traded in Monster Party. I know, I love Monster Party. But I had Monster Party complete in box. And there's a story behind those. I wish I had them here to show, but I did sell them for $200 for those three games. And I got cash immediately. But what I did, when I got those games originally, I got NES Soccer, NES Pinball, together complete in box, before I had a YouTube channel, before Retro Game was super big and well known, I guess, I got them for about $10 each. And that's a good deal. 10 to 200 And then I've also got that Monster Party game complete in box. I think it was only like $15 on eBay. I think. And I, I wish I had those still. But keep in mind that since I sold those games for $200. Those are not expensive games. They were expensive because there were variants. The five screw variants of the first two. And they were complete in box. So I can take that money. And I can buy those games again. If I want to. For like, they're only like $10 games, normally. This is what I paid for them, but I bought them complete in box, so they're worth a lot more. And Monster Party is a little more valuable, but yeah, and you know, it's, it's, it's okay. I'm okay with selling them. I don't need the boxes for every game. Some people do, and I understand that, I respect that, but personally, I don't need them. And plus, I also have a full game recording of me playing Monster Party, like three different full game recordings of me playing it on my computer, so I'm, I'm good with that. I do want to get Monster Party again. Soccer and Pinball I don't care too much about, but I can get it for like five bucks. Anyways, let's move on. Now, all these gray games, except for Zelda 1 and Zelda 2, are just your basic NES games. I've got some Tengen games down there, and I've got some of those Christian games down there too. The Christian um, Wisdom Tree games. Well, I've done a video on that. I have two of those, and I have one game that's like an unlicensed uh, action game uh, for the NES. But out of all those games, what is my highlight? My highlight is the Castlevania series. Not only because I love Castlevania, it was some of the very first NES games I played outside of Mario and Zelda. And with that, I have the Castlevania NES trilogy here. There we go. Now, Castlevania 3... I was one of the first games. It was in the batch of the first games I got with my first NES when I turned, like, 16 or something. So, uh, yeah. Back in 2006, I think. I'm not that old. It's not like I'm 90, 86 or something like that. No. Um, but yeah. Simon's Quest I got a little bit later. In Castlevania 1, I got on eBay. I think I got Simon's Quest when they were doing the retro games on GameStop. Um, they're all pretty good condition, especially the first uh, 2 and 3, I mean. Number 1 has this, like... I got some of the ink off, and I got, like, partially the ink off on the front, but I need to get some, like, other kind of thing to get rid of that text. We've got one more game that's important to me on the NES, and that is uh, Goonies 2. I don't really like the game that much. It's kind of a stinker. Uh, the, I hear the first Goonies is better on the Famicom, but um, 
I like the Goonies movie and the Goonies like as a whole. Um, now I got this autograph by the actor that played Chunk in the Goonies. You know, the guy that did the Truffle Shuffle. Yeah. I used to live where the Goonies was filmed, pretty much. Not the exact location, but the same town, regionally, pretty much. Um, so they had a Goonies convention there every year. I had him sign it that one year. I should get Sean Astin to sign this. He was just in Portland, like, last week for a comic convention. I should get Sean Astin to sign this. He's right there on the cover. But yeah, The Goonies 2 from the NES. I don't really like the game that much. It's cool. But the map system's confusing as heck. It's overly complicated. I hear the first one doesn't have the map. It's just one, like, continuous, like, screen. It doesn't go between doors and stuff like that. So it's not as confusing. So I, I might have to check out the first one. And I've played the first one, but the arcade version. All right, other than the games, I've got some Super Nintendo boxes for Star Fox. Probably my rarest one. Star Trek Next Generation and Ultraman. Got the controller, SNES controller. Which actually comes in a box similarly to the SNES games. Uh, I've got some of these plastic NES cases that I talked about recently. I've got, for NES, the only box games I have remaining are Silent Service and Jeopardy. And then I have the NES 4 score complete in box. Which is an adapter that allows you to play four players. I've done a review of that. Alright guys, for this part of the video we're doing N64 shelf. And I have to do a handheld camera. So uh, bear in mind that it might be a little shaky. But I've got a lot of Nintendo Clip 64 collectibles, and uh, I do want to point out that a lot of these games are Japanese, and a lot of them are English, North American ones too, but they're kind of mixed in. So what we've got here is a official Nintendo N64 drawer shelf. I'll open that up in a bit, but it's officially licensed. A lot of people see like one that's like half size. This one's double size, so it has two rows. Uh, I've got this... Uh, N64 keychains from the Nintendo Rewards recently. Got a, um, what is this, like a Taco Bell kids meal toy. The Rumble Pack. Got one of these. Does anyone know if this is worth anything? It's a gold-plated Pokemon thing. I don't know what it is. It was from Burger King. I don't have the whole thing, but I don't know if it's worth anything. Back there, there is a Nintendo 64 box of Goemon Mystical Ninja for N64. I have the game, too, of course. Right here, I've got the Pokedex. Now, N64 was out in the late 90s, so I associate it with Pokemon. And this is the Pokedex. Uh, Tiger handheld, I believe. They're open. There we go. So it's basically like the Pokedex in the show. You can keep track of your Pokemon. And it is by Tiger. Alright, so I've got this Star Fox 64 action figure, Ocarina of Time Ganon, and Ocarina of Time Zelda. Behind them, I've got the last part of my N64 collection, which are in that stack, that stack, and the smaller stack here. It's Once again, it's hard to get to some of these games to show you a bunch of them because I don't have them laid out in a flat position like I do with the NES games. Uh, but I will show you them as much as I can. Now, this is a recent pickup for me. It's a rebuy, the uh, N64 transfer pack with Pokemon Blue, which didn't come with Pokemon Blue, but I have that. All right, heading back to this N64 drawer over here, we're going to open it up, and inside you can see what is revealed, and that is N64 games. I have a lot of them side labeled, especially all of the North American region ones. Some of the Japanese ones that are multi region. I also put the North American label on the side. Like, I think, um, Mystical Ninja is one of them. Uh, but these, these side labels are really good. They're on, like, a vinyl-coated sticker that is extremely well done. And I have the rest of the stickers for every single North American region and variant N64 sticker for later usage. Um, but yeah, I've got all these games. And just out of my own curiosity, what the heck is this game? Oh, it's Custom Robo, okay. Custom Robo 2. And then what the heck is this game? Oh, I think that's another copy of Donkey Kong 64, but the Japanese version. Okay, cool. I'm just checking for my own. I didn't know what I have. Alright guys, so now we're moving out of the retro territory. There's not too much, like, 
actually like retro cart games left, except for Game Boy and handheld stuff. So now that we're done with N64, we've got oh, you know, the next console in line, PlayStation Five. I have Demon Souls for the PS Five, which I was afraid I have. This was a gift from my friend uh, at Sega Blocks. Um, and yeah, it's really generous for they gave me this, even though I don't have a PS5, I have access to a PS5, um, but I haven't even played it yet, so there it is. Then we've got my PlayStation Portable, the PSP games, which are Monster Hunter, uh, Freedom, and Star Wars The Clone Wars Republic Heroes, which are pretty cool games, but I don't really play the PSP at all, um, so there's no real reason for me to keep them. I had about five other different PSP games that I sold recently, kinda. Uh, this is a handheld, like a bootleg handheld with a bunch of NES ROMs. Uh, and then the rest of these are my PlayStation 3 games, so you can check them out. Some of these I haven't got to yet. Actually, a lot of these I haven't got to. I didn't have the PS3 growing up. Uh, something I got more recently, so only a few of these games we've actually played a lot of. Either that or I played them on like Steam and just wanted to get them on the PS3. Also, I've got two PSPs down there. And some of these don't have the side labels, but they most of them are actually games in the cases. Out of all these games, the one that I've played the most is probably um, it's Lord of the Rings: War in the North. Right there. Yeah, it's a good one. I've got some other really cool ones too on there. Like I've got Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, 06, Sonic 06, it's pretty cool. Motor Storm's pretty cool. Got the Metal Gear Solid Collection, which is probably my most expensive PS3 game, if I can consider that. I got Persona 5, The Last of Us, God of War 3, GTA 4. A lot of the big heavy hitters. Here's an obscure one, kind of. J-Star's Victory Versus, which is another Shonen Jump. Um, kind of like the Shonen Jump game we saw on the, NES, on the Famicom that I have. It's like that, but it's an updated one for the PS3. We've got a Pac-Man. It's not just a Pac-Man. It's actually an arcade plug-and-play collection. We've got the R-Wing from Star Fox. I would have kept that with my Star Fox figure, but there's not a throw up there. We've got Pikachu. I've got this guy. I don't even know what anime he's from. If you know, let me know, but it's a keychain. Uh, I've got this... What is it called? Like, so S Sword Soldier or something? I don't know what it's called. Uh, Iron Golem or something from Final Fantasy VIII. And a Jigglypuff. Down here we've got some booze. We've got some booze. Not like you're going to drink some booze. But like here we've got like a boo and another boo from Mario. We've got a Mario Kart figure. A Cappy. Some cups with some junk in it. And the Mario mm. Pinball. Ball Mario figure. Everybody loves that. Uh, we also got a Tribble and some Star Trek collectible. We got my Clone Wars. Uh, this is not a Funko Pop. This is a, um, a Mighty Mug. Original Mighty Mug. Complete in box. Uh, I've got this. Kind of notable. Ninja Turtles collector's case. But it's just... I took it out of the case because the case was like damaged beyond repair. So it's just a piece of cardboard. Speaking of Ninja Turtles, I had the arcade one up. You probably saw it in my past videos in the background. I recently sold that arcade one up for $250 uh, to someone who really wanted it. So that's pretty cool. It was a really cool way to sell it to someone that wanted it because I didn't really have any use for it. I played the heck out of Turtles Arcade and Turtles in Time on that thing so many times. It was taking up space. It's kind of limited in what it can do, but it's super cool. And I'm just happy that I sold it, and not only sold it, sold it to someone who really appreciates it. These are my PlayStation 2 games. Um, a lot of them are just kind of like random stuff. I don't really care about the PlayStation 2 too much. Uh, there's a couple games that I really do like on here, and it's kind of hard to get to because it's at the bottom. Uh, one of the games that I have that I like a lot is uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! game from PS2, Duels of the Roses. Another one that I like a lot is Rocky, but I have it on GameCube, so I prefer it on GameCube. Uh, Soul Calibur 2 is good, another one I prefer on GameCube. Another good one is um, Dragon Quest VIII. Or, yeah, VIII. That's pretty cool. I love that game a lot, but it's really hard and it's kind of long. 
Uh, and then, uh, majority, with the majority of my PS2 games from back in the day when I had a PS2 and it was new, and it was the current gen, I mostly just played Final Fantasy XI, which is the online MMO, which I don't have the disc for anymore. And then I played uh, karaoke games like Sing Star and dancing games like Pump It Up and all the Dance Dance Revolution games. So that's what I did with the PS2. I didn't play like the big heavy hitters. I didn't play God of War or GTA. Uh, so yeah, that's what I did. And that concludes the second shelf of the game room. All right, guys, we're on to the third shelf, which is the third of the biggest shelf in the room. Now, speaking of the shelves themselves, I bought them all identically on purpose so they would look decent in my room, because usually I have like a mix and match, a mishmash, if you will, of random shelves and stuff, which I don't like. I try to keep my room looking nice as much as possible. I actually like clean and organize it a lot more than I would if I didn't have all the stuff, so it's like I try to, try to keep up with it. So I got all these shelves. They're pretty expensive. They're $35 each to Target. They're pretty good for what I have, because you can stack them and they go pretty far back. Especially with like Switch games or loose carts, especially like Sega Genesis. Smaller carts can go way back there. Um, they're not the best because they take up more room because they're like double wide. But I like them. So they're all identical. Except this one is actually like pure black. And these two are like coffee black because they didn't have it in stock after I bought the first one for some reason. So here we go. The most recent games I have besides the PlayStation 5 game that I had earlier is Nintendo Switch games. I've got them kind of covered up with these, like, LED NES figures. I've got some Funko Pop of Shantae. That was a gift from Brian. Thank you, Brian. I've got this, which is a Transformer. Uh, I think it's Bebop or Jazz. His name's Jazz, I think. Yeah. Um, and he is a Transformer that's broken, so I can't actually transform him and make him look like a robot form. So I keep him in car form. Uh, my most recent game for the Switch is Ninja Turtles Cowabunga Collection, which I've got right here. Uh, I've also got, um, has, I'm blocking it a little bit, I've got a Catwoman figure from the new movie The Batman, which I've actually got two Catwoman figures. One's right here, and one's right here. The funny thing is, this is the more detailed, articulated version that costs more. It was like 20 bucks or something. This is like the cheaper, like, you can pick it up for your kids and they won't break it type of figure. Um, it's a little bit taller. It's not quite as detailed. But on those two cat one figures that I picked up on the same day, this one was also cheaper. Uh, I like this one more. And I didn't expect that when I picked it out of the box. So I thought it was just going to be like, beep, boop. And like, like, not, like, stiff. And like, not, you know, not like a detailed. But it's pretty detailed. You can see her face. She's not wearing the mask the whole time. Doesn't come with a weapon, but I don't care. And she's very posable, which surprised me. So if you're looking at those DC figures and you see these like cheaper ones that look like they're like they're taller and they come in like a cheaper box and they don't look as detailed. I don't know what they're actually called, but they're not the mainline DC for the hardcore fans ones. They're like a smaller one, even though they're actually bigger. Don't don't like dismiss those ones because they're pretty cool. They have ones of Joker and Batman. And different characters, not from the Batman movie, but they have more in that line. Um, yeah, Switch games. Here's an important one, or like one that most people don't have, but I got the complete unbox box set. Akiba Strip. Akiba Strip. Which is a game where you undress people in the Akihabara district of Japan where you undress them by punching them either their head, their body, or their legs to break off those parts of their armor. And when they, they're exposed, it's not really that graphic, um, to the light outside, they burn up because they're vampires. It's, it's kind of a weird anime game. Well, it's got Splatoon 2 box, Witcher 3, Wild Hunt, Complete Edition box. I've got a Splatoon controller and the yellow-purple Joy-Con controller set. Uh, up there, I've actually got the box for the Nintendo Switch Lite, which my friend Claire gave me the box for when she got her Nintendo Switch Lite. Oh, actually, it's, it's up there. That's a different box. That's the N64. Uh, I'll show that later, but it's, it's in a different spot. And then we're getting to... Um, so now we're getting to GameCube games, which go all the way across the shelf, all the way GameCube games. They all go down below it. 
down to here, GameCube games. Uh, and then in front of it, I've got a bunch of action figures. These are like mostly anime action figures, but I've also got this little Batman head. I've got a GameCube, a miniature GameCube. I've got Kuwabara from Yu Yu Hakusho. I've got some Funko Pops. I've got Leon from Resi 4. I've got Bulma, Funko Pop. Uh, Videl, Funko Pop. Ahsoka Tano, Funko Pop. I've got this Ahsoka Tano Rebels. Black Series Star Wars figure and a Rebels playing cards, Rebels Ghost Ship replica, Rebels Chopper. And then I've got Lego, Clone Wars of Darth Maul vs. Ahsoka Tano. I've got Luigi, Majora's Mask Link, uh, some Wind Waker figures and a little Pikmin and a Shy Guy. I've got a Xenomorph face hugger back there. A lot of cool stuff. Oh, this is actually a kind of important one if we're talking about toys. This is a Pez dispenser that I've had since I was a kid. Further showcasing my proof that Donatello was always my favorite of the Ninja Turtles. And he looks like he does in the animated first cartoon series. What's well, got Astro Boy there? It's probably about Astro Boy. Um, but GameCube game. It's a little hard to get back there because of the toys in front of it once again. Uh, and these are not alphabetically sorted yet, but they will be eventually. That's the one thing I didn't do was I didn't sort everything. Uh, there's some consoles I think I did sort, maybe the Xbox. Uh, but yeah, one of the most important and one of the most expensive games is Fantasy Star Online, which is right there. Fantasy Star Online is an online game for the GameCube. So, Fantasy Star Online 1 and 2 for the GameCube is a real expensive game. I have it completed in box. Uh, it's not the exact copy I had when I was a kid, but I do have it. Uh, and I do have the Ethernet adapter for the original GameCube and the GameCube and all that. So I could potentially play on, like, I think they have, like, fan-made servers for it. I don't know how it works, but I could try that someday. Um, but Fantasy Star Online is not just an expensive game, but it's one of my favorites on the GameCube. I also have it on the Xbox, and I modded the Xbox to have a fake Xbox Live account so I can actually log in and play, because that's required on that version. I can play the game on Xbox normally. So I can play it on GameCube, I can play it on Xbox, I have the Ethernet adapter for the GameCube. I, I, I'm all set for Fantasy Star. Uh, I love the game, I played it a lot as a kid, online and off, because you can do four player split screen as well. It's just an awesome game. It's kind of, it's really, really time consuming and crazy, but it's a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. Here's one that I bought recently, that's a rebuy for me. I had it when I was a kid, but I rebought it. And this is probably the most expensive game that I bought in the last like two years. I think I paid uh, $80 for it. Yeah, I thought it was 60 but I guess it was 80 Usually I limit myself to 60 or 70 and I don't even come that close normally. But uh, yeah, this was 80 bucks. It doesn't have the manual. It's player's choice. Um, I put a little sleeve over it. But yeah, it's F-Zero GX. Really cool game. And if you can find an arcade machine that has F-Zero AX, which is the arcade version, I think, um, you can use your GameCube memory card from this game on the arcade machine and uh, unlock stuff, I think. Or you can make, use your like custom car prints and stuff like that because you can design your own car painting and stuff. It's a pretty cool game. Pokemon Soul Silver for the Nintendo DS box set. Pretty cool. I don't know how I have that there. Also got Kid Icarus box set. And then I've got, on the subject of 3DS games, new 3DS XL box. And on the subject of boxes, we've got, oh my god, we got more. We got my only GBA game in box, which is uh, The Amazing Sea Monkeys, of all things. Weird. I know I have that one complete in box. I've got my two Wii games uh, clean in box. I had a third Wii game that's in this big box, but I threw it away because it got mold on it uh, from a much previous house, and that was Wii Sports Resort. So sadly, I had to throw that one away. I tried to salvage it, but it was it was bad. Um, so we got Red Steel 2, which is an awesome game for the Wii. I still haven't done a Wii Wednesday on this yet. Um, but yeah, I got the box set and the game, of course. Also got the original version of Skyward Sword, uh, that came with the soundtrack and the gold Wiimote, which I've got that over there. 
So those are some completed boxes that I've got. Big box. It's on that same subject. Here is the gold Nintendo Wii remote. Now we've got Wii U games up here. This one's actually a Wii game. Uh, but then uh, more Wii U games down here. I don't know why Resident Evil has a black uh, spine, but it does. Um, so we've got all those games. Nothing too important. Nothing too big. It's just Wii U games. I mean, like, I like the Wii U. I was a huge supporter of it. I remember my biggest memory, my most, my most memorable moment of the Wii U was, okay, the Wii U's coming out. It's coming out. And... And the Wii U's coming out. It's about to launch. It's about to launch. It's like a month away. I'm so excited. I go to my local Fred Myers. I go, all right, guys. I went to the launch party for Skyward Sword like less than a year ago or like a year ago before the Wii U came out or whatever. I know you do launch parties. When is the launch party for the Wii U? And they're like, we have Wiis. I'm like, no, no, not, not Wii. Wii U. Is it? They're like, oh, oh, you mean like an accessory for the Wii? Uh, we've got those two. I'm like, no, this is Nintendo's big new console. It's coming out in a couple weeks. When's the launch party? They're like, oh, oh, I haven't, I haven't heard of that. And I'm like, I'm like, well, can you keep me updated? Like, I'll come back if if, if there's anything coming. It's like, no, we don't have we don't have a party scheduled for that. I'm just like, whoa, the rumors on the internet are true. People don't know what this is. This is this is not a good sign for Nintendo. And overall, it was not a good sign for Nintendo. The console may have been cool. It might have had cool games, had a cool controller, but overall, a disappointing and kind of a sad time to be a Nintendo fan. You'd missed out on a lot if you only had Nintendo. And so it's very different than from what we have with the Switch. So those are my Wii U games. That was my Wii U memory. But I do have one. Here's a Wii U game that's not super big. but And it's not super notable because it's a Nintendo Selects version. Which means a lower priced version of it. I got this at Goodwill. For $10. But it was actually it actually was... The blue special of the week. So I got it for $5. This is completely sealed. Completely new. Wind Waker for HD for the Wii U. Okay. So then we're going to... So then we're going down to the original Wii. Which I was also a huge supporter of the original Wii. And I still love the original Wii. And I've got a lot of games for it. So I've got all these remainder of the Wii U shelf. And the last I checked, this was before I got a few more games. I don't think I've sold any Wii games recently. Uh, I think I have like 100 Wii games. I probably have more like 110. I'm not sure. A couple of them are not in box. But most of them are. A couple, like Maybe like 5 to 10 of them are like the GameStop cases. And then a couple of them are like those paper sleeves, like the Wii Sports. Um, but here's one right here that's just actually a Wii game. Ninja Turtle Smash Up. We did a we did a video of that a couple weeks ago. Here's a couple I noticed that are more valuable. Uh, Soccer Wars, So Long My Love, which is a uh, turn-based um, strategy game with like I think it has like a dating simulator aspect to it as well. It's pretty long. It has a lot of text and talking. Here's another one. Uh, Rune Factory. Tides of Destiny. I, I haven't played it. It's my brother's, I think. But yeah. Moving on down, we've got some Donkey Konga bongos for the GameCube. And I've got this cool case that was given to me by a friend in high school. Um, which can hold GameCube games, specifically. So I have my extra copy of Resident Evil Zero in there. I've got this, which Brian got me. This is the N64 controller for the Nintendo Switch. It's got an awesome built-in rumble, Bluetooth capabilities. Feels very nice and easy to use. Um, it's pretty cool. You can use it for a lot of different things. It's got like a snapshot button up there and a home button. It's really good. It's really good. So thank you, Brian, once again, for getting me that N64 controller, because I know they're still hard to find. Down here we've got Wii games. More Wii games, of course, again. Um... Uh, let's see, what's an expensive one that I have? Oh, Castle of Shikigami 3. We talked about that because I did that on our recent live stream uh, maybe a couple months ago. 
Paso Shigami, I got that for like three dollars at GameStop used. It's now like over sixty bucks. And it's completed box. Um, not sure what else is really big on the Wii at the moment. I've got Twilight Princess, Skyward Sword. Um, there's a bunch of cool games on the Wii that I really like. I don't have too many of like the junk games. One of them that I have that's a junk game that you probably know about is Canada Hunt. You know, I don't like that one. It's probably the junkiest one I have. Maybe Billy the Wizard, um, but I don't have the disc for Billy the Wizard anymore. Um, I don't know. Like, a lot of them I don't have. I don't have a lot of the movie games, you know. I have B-movie game. That one's okay, though. Um, I don't know. I don't have a lot of, like, the junky Wii games, but I still have a lot of them. So I, I consider, like, out of all the Wii games, the ones that I have, like, like a hundred of them, they're all pretty good. They're not, like, shovelware. Like, I don't have the shovelware Wii games. I have a couple here and there, but, like, at least some of them are justified shovelware. Like, like it's shovelware. It's common, but it's, like, it's still a good game. Like, Wheel of Fortune. That's fun. Uh, we've also got uh, Wii Party. I think I picked a Wii Party. I don't know what that even is. I picked it up recently. Uh, and Fling Smash, Super Monkey Ball, Banana Blitz. I don't. I haven't played those at all, so those are something that I need to check out that I totally forgot about. Uh, got this pickup from the Nintendo Rewards. That's important. This is important. This is a hat for my friend Marcus at previously Retro Game Players, but... Uh, now is known as Sunset Hotline. This is his hat he gave me at Par Retro Game Expo uh, 2019, which was the most recent one. He had a booth there. I helped him out at his vendor booth. I helped him out at his arcade. He has an arcade in Astoria, Oregon called Galactics. Go check it out next time you're at the beach because it is awesome. It will not let you down or disappoint you. Uh, retro Game Players, Sunset Hotline. Check it out because uh, this guy's awesome. I've known him for a long time, and we met through YouTube. We ran into each other at a Goodwill. And we're like, we know each other. We recognize each other. So it was pretty cool. Anyways, um, that's just one of the cool opportunities that I've had through my YouTube channel, High Beard Games, is meeting people. I don't make money off of YouTube, but I meet people off YouTube and make opportunities. So that's how I met Brian. You know, like he's on a lot of my videos. That's how I met all my friends that I have currently. That's how I have my life situation. That's how I have this new room. That's how I have this place to put my stuff. That the game room wouldn't exist without Happy Bird Games. And this video wouldn't exist without the game room. So it goes together somehow. But um, yeah, like I wouldn't have any of the stuff if I didn't use a YouTube channel. Like I, I wouldn't have like the same stuff that I have now in the place that I have with the people that I know without the YouTube channel. Like it's, it sounds weird at first, but it, it makes sense that you trace everything back to the YouTube channel. That's where everybody knows me from, so that's how I have all this stuff. Moving on down, we've got the Xbox section. Here's an important one. The cases are out, but I have them. Dead or Alive Collection, or Ultimate. It's a remake of Dead or Alive 2 with Dead or Alive 3's graphics, and a good port of Dead or Alive 1. Here's something I want to talk about a little bit briefly. The M Classic, it's an awesome, awesome, awesome feature. Uh, it plugs into your um, HDMI output, and basically it upscales everything to 1080p or 2K resolution. It says 4K, but it's not. It's not 4K. I don't know why it says that. Um, but anything that uses an HDMI port, you can do this, so it's really good for my recordings. also allows you to sw switch it down to 4x3 aspect ratio, which is like a CRT TV type. Um... Which is really good for games. It makes games on the GameCube Xbox generation look amazing. It makes PS3 games look great. It makes um, uh, Switch games look a little bit better. The retro 2D games, I don't like 2D games look that much better with this because it smooths them out. Which I don't like personally. But it does have the 4x3 aspect ratio so I still use it sometimes. Um... Yeah, it's really cool. But the bad thing about it is I had one. I thought it was broken, so I bought another one. Why? Which is why I have the box. Um, I bought another one. It's eighty bucks, a lot of money, and I'm trying to save money at the moment. So I bought it. Had the same problem, which sucks because that means they're both not broken. There's something else wrong. I found out what was wrong. It was my HDMI duplicator 
uh, splitter cable adapter thing. The thing that makes it so one HDMI can output the same thing into two TVs, and that was the real problem. So instead of spending $20 to replace it, I spent almost $90 to replace it by getting the M Classic. And I still have to buy the other thing, so it's like, uh, it's 100 bucks. Oh, here's something that I totally forgot about. This, I set aside. Um, these are my collectibles. This, the more recent collectibles, or not more recent, but like, these are just collectibles that I don't have anywhere to go. This is Nintendo Platinum playing cards that came from the old Club Nintendo. This I got very recently is a soundtrack called Play It Loud that has soundtracks for six different Super Nintendo games on it. It's a CD. Um, I got this for $10. It was $25 marked down to $10 at Half Price Books. Also got this, which is a really cool behind the scenes slash commercial for Donkey Kong Country on the Super Nintendo. This is actually a VHS. It has kind of a weird box because it was like a mailing thing. They mailed it to people when they had Nintendo Power back in the day. Got some cool books. A novel based on Castlevania II Simon's Quest called Worlds of Power. Got that. Dude, surprisingly, I paid $6.66 for this. So six 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 is what I paid for it on eBay. I'm not even kidding. Got another book, Mastering Pac-Man. Got another book, How to Win at Nintendo. Got another book that I got more recently, Super Nintendo Games and Secrets. Or Games Secrets. And one that I had before called Nintendo Game Secrets, which is mostly, I think, um, these are all NES games. And it also talks about the Power Glove. And the U-Force. Okay, so... Let's get down to the bottom. I actually have some more books. I have some Halo books. I have a Nintendo Super Nintendo book. But we're going to get to the Xbox games, which are hard to get to, but I have a whole bunch. I have about as much as I do for PS2. So once again, this is really hard to get to because there's stuff in the way. But this is my Xbox collection. I've got um, a lot of games for the Xbox. This is double layer, double stack, just like this Wii shelf is. So it's like double stack. Uh, I'm going to try to move some of this stuff out of the way carefully yeah, it didn't really work carefully but anyways at least you can see them now so here is my xbox games a lot of the sports games i got on a sale at half price books where they had everything's a dollar day so i just picked up a like 10 10 or 11 different like xbox original games for a dollar each some of the better ones like legacy of kane or buffy the vampire slayer um or you know like rocky Splinter Cell, Project Gotham Racing, which is one of my favorite. Well, it's probably my favorite game on the Xbox. It's Project Gotham Racing too. Um, those ones cost more, of course. Got those separately. Dead or Alive is one of my favorites too. Uh, I have Marvel vs. Capcom too, which you probably can't see sadly, but I do have it. Got Fantasy Star Online up there. A lot of cool games, and they do continue over there, but there's like books in the way, so I'm not going to do that just yet. All right, everybody, I moved the boxes, so uh, here is another look at some of my other games for the original Xbox. Now, these are actually not... Wait, are they? I think they might be sorted alphabetically. No, they're not. They're not. I think some of them were, but then they got mixed up or something. I was, like, I was sorting these alphabetically when I first found the shop, and it just took too long. Uh, that's why I've got the Star Wars games next to each other. Right here, I've got a Video Games Monthly box, which is what I use to store my Game Boy collection. So yeah, I've got Game Boy stuff too. There's a lot of games in here. Like these ones, gray ones are all original Game Boy. And here it's not Pokemon Yellow. It's Donkey Kong Land 3. Um, which is cool. Which is a cool game. It's a good port. Also got original Donkey Kong Land. I'm trying to get more into the Game Boy. I did a Game Boy mod, but I still haven't played it that much. Uh, like, I modded the screen, backlight screen of all my game, my game Boy, I mean. Um, I'm thinking about getting a Game Boy fanny pack and bringing the Game Boy to the convention. But these, which are mostly um, the Game Boy Color games that are clear. You can tell it's Game Boy Color because it has a clear cart. Like this one. Yu-Gi-Oh! for the Game Boy Color. This is a pretty cool game. I've got some Japanese region Game Boy games in here, too. And 
these black cart ones like this, you can uh, play on both, I think. Pokemon Silver, I have the Japanese version. I actually really want to play this again. I was thinking about this last night, actually. Power Rangers Lightspeed Rescue is one that I'm doing a review on. A couple empty cases. Oh, that one has Star Trek, actually. Game Boy Camera did a video on this. This is actually the, this is actually the Japanese version called Pocket Camera. Same thing. GBA games, Rave Master from Japan, um, a couple other GBA games. Here's a notable Game Boy game, Star Wars Episode on Racer, which I always forget I have this, and I always forget that it exists. We've also got another weird one, another weird one. This is Tamagotchi for the Game Boy with a built-in uh, sound, and I tried unscrewing it and taking it apart and putting a new battery in it, it didn't work. It's supposed to make chirps from the um, game pack itself, so that way it's like a real Tamagotchi and it can play itself and keep track of itself even when your Game Boy's off. Oh, here's another notable thing. This is not Game Boy, this is not Game Boy Advance. This is for the DS. It's the Rumble Pack for the DS. It's not a game. It's shaped like a GBA cart, but it's the Rumble Pack for the DS. It actually makes your DS rumble. And it works with a few games like Metro Prime Pinball, I think Metro Prime Hunters, and uh, a couple other games. I'm not sure. Guys, I almost forgot. There's one more shelf. This is my PC big box games and PC games in general. Final Fantasy XIV. This is not A Realm Reborn. This is the original. I've got Final Fantasy XI. I've got every expansion. I made sure to get every expansion that was available on disc. Uh, this is the second expansion, Chains of Promathia. We've got Treasures of Ottergon. We've got uh, Wings of the Goddess. This one's a collection that I think comes with the first three expansions in the game. Maybe the first two expansions in the game. I'm not sure. Uh, this is a Star Wars Best of PC that has a bunch of Star Wars games. As you can see, Knights of the Republic, Republic Commando, some strategy games, Battlefront. Let's look at another one, Star Wars The Clone Wars. You might have seen my PSP version or PS3 version. I have that as well, and also on the Wii, I think. Uh, Lost Via Domus. Domu. This is a Lost video game based on the TV series. Down here, I've got a couple consoles. I've got my Wii U. I'm looking for these. My Joy-Cons. My big Joy-Cons for the Switch. I don't know where they went, but now I know. Uh, and a, a Wii. My original Wii that's slightly broken. And below it, the Wii U. The reason why the Wii U is in hiding is because I don't have a power cord for it. I left it at my mom's garage. Now we're almost done here, guys. But one thing that I want to show is just the room itself. So here's this uh, tapestry that I have. I found this uh, very appealing, and it kind of fits the intro to my channel, so I got that for like 10 bucks on Amazon. Over here I've got a Blade Runner poster, which is based on the theatrical poster of Blade Runner, which I love that movie. Very cyberpunk movie. Over here I've got a Labyrinth movie poster, which I've had for a very long time. Love that movie with David Bowie and Jennifer Connelly. Um, I've got these Labyrinth and Beetlejuice art prints from a convention. I've got my VHS collection. There's more to this, as you've probably seen on my Instagram, because it's all in there. Um, but there's more to this VHS collection. These are just the anime ones, and then Robin Hood. There's the anime ones. I have more that I'm going to get later in time. There we've got Kirby hanging out. Uh, supposed to be flying. That's why he's up there. Over here I've got my Piranha Puppet, which you've seen in past videos. I've got an Army of Darkness Ash plushie. I've got a Soka figure, which I found this randomly at Target. Super good find for that Target. I got an alien figure, Soka versus Vader, Tenshi Muyo figures, my Godzilla boxes, and my Godzilla figures, which are, I got a bobblehead, which moves on its own when it reacts to the sunlight. Uh, I've got this Mecha Godzilla bank, which is Brian's. Uh, this is a bank. You can put coins in it, of course, and also it does move. So, like, the arms will move and stuff. This is really cool. Love Mecha Godzilla. Up there, we've got Jet Jaguar. Jet Jaguar. And then we've got the big one. Godzilla, I think Godzilla 2000. Something like that. 
Uh, it's from... Yeah, Godzilla 2004 is what they call it. I think it's from Final Wars. Uh, got this one from the 70s Godzilla. Uh, Godzilla vs. Mothra. Is this one right here. That's a NECA. I've also got Shin, Shin Godzilla from the new lineup of toys. Really cool. I love that movie. His tail's very long, just like in the movie. I don't know if you can see it. Um, I've got a Lego Skeleton. For some reason, that's one of the few Legos I have. Behind it, I've got King Ghidorah figure. But that's awesome. Elvira, Funko. Or not Funko. Um, NECA, Toonie Terror. There we go. And then here, we've got a... Ectoplasm Pony, it's My Little Pony Ghostbusters crossover figure, which that was kind of cool. We've got a wood engraved Nintendo logo. This is not cardboard, this is actually wood. Someone painted that and made that at a convention. I've got this, which is actually in the box still, but not completely new. I've used it. The Mario Kart Racing Wheel Deluxe for the Nintendo Switch and PC. Um, up there, this is the box for the N64 controller. That's a Nintendo hat from Club Nintendo, a Mario's hat. Up here I've had my collectibles. I've got some Gundam, Mandalorian, Ninja Turtles, Alien, Gremlins, Back to the Future, Evil Dead, 1 and 2, Army of Darkness. Uh, I've got Freddy Krueger. I've got Linda's Head. I've got Metroid, Samus, Figma, a gift from my good buddy Will. Uh, another Metroid. Ecto um, from Ghostbusters, Ecto 1, Mario. This Yoshi was clay and sculpted by my friend Elise. I've got a Berserk art print thing right here. Got an Art of War Berserk Casca figure and a Star Trek ship. And next to that Figma of Samus from Metroid. We've also got a Figma of Guts from Berserk, which is my favorite manga series. Over here I've got a Game Boy pack. You can carry your Game Boy around in it. Got my passes from the previous two Porn Retro Gaming Expos. Uh, up here I've got a Metroid canvas poster that is uh, resembles the NES game. Over here I've got a Centipede Arcade Cabinet replica that actually plays. Got some manga in the background. Fist of the North Star, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Berserk, going all the way from 1. I have a few missing, but it goes to about 27. And then I've got the two most recent ones, the art book, or like the guidebook, and the novel. So, panning around the room, we've got a door. Whoa. I've got my Ahsoka and Grogu picture, which I love this picture so much, from The Mandalorian. Uh, that was my closet, which you've got my movies. So, I guess I could show that. It's, it's really hard to get to. Here's my CD collection. I've got more behind it. As you can see, it kind of goes up behind it. Also got some extra Amiibos, complete in box. Got my movies. A lot of different movies. Got a Babu Frick figure, which is pretty cool, actually. I've got all of Dragon Ball Z and all of Dragon Ball on DVD. Got all of the Clone Wars, which is actually really expensive now. Uh, a lot of other movies. I like horror movies. I like uh, 80s throwback movies like... You know, like Ninja Turtles and stuff. I like Power Rangers. There's some Japanese movies that I have. Shin Godzilla, Prison School Live Action, Ultraman, Digimon. Uh, a lot of different things. In my closet, I've got this. Uh, it came with the Nintendo Classic Edition. It's a poster that resembles something from the 80s kid's childhood. Play Nintendo with the full set Nintendo Entertainment System. Now you're playing with power. Love that poster. I have it framed, and this is in my closet, so there's a few other things here. We're winding down the video. PlayStation 3. This. An adapter for the Retron that allows you to play Game Gear, Master System, and Sega card games. 
we've got a mess going on here. Just because of the most recent live stream, we did a uh, Mickey Mouse capade for the Famicom on the Retron 5. I've also got my original Xbox console and a VCR that I got very recently. So I got a VCR, which is really cool to have. Uh, below it is just boxes of either wires or extra stuff. These are also my clothes, so that's not important. Down here is where I keep my controllers. are actually sorted by console and this clear um, tote thing. Over on this shelf, I've got some more manga and random stuff that I probably shouldn't have. And I've got my 3DS and DS game collection on the bottom shelf because I don't really care about them. We're winding down the video now, so I've got my computer right there. Got my game shelf sorted, so I've got NES and other NES. Those are the two working ones. NES for parts, NES for parts. Um, I've got my Super Nintendo, which I bought at the Part Retro Game Expo because my original one didn't work anymore because it exploded. Um, kind of weird, but yeah, it kind of exploded. Super Game Boy is up there. A game that I want to play with Brian is right there. That's why it's out. N64 right there. All these work pretty much except for those two NESs um, and anything else that I'll point out. Got my GameCube hooked up with the Game Boy Player, an orange GameCube remote, or I mean controller. And it's called an HDMI uh, adapter, which is what that remote right there is for. For the HDMI on GameCube. I've got a Wii. You can see it's all plugged in and stuff. Down below it, I've got my PS2 with some awesome PS2 cables next to it. Sega Genesis Model 1, Sega Dreamcast, Sega Dreamcast again, and some controllers. Over here I've got a PS1, original PlayStation, you know, with the original PlayStation controller that doesn't have thumbsticks. I have a Super Nintendo Model 2, which does work, but I just don't use it. And my original Super Nintendo, which I'm keeping just because it's my first console and I want to keep it. It might be repairable in the future, I have no idea, but it currently does not work. An Atari 2600. Yeah, that's the actual one. It's not the flashback. It's the actual one. Kind of doesn't fit in there at all, but it's there. I've got the Atari HD from Retron, which is actually really cool. Um, and then I've got the controller for that one as well, which is the same as normal Atari controllers input. And there you have it. That's my um, all my game console set up right there. All right, everybody, that's it for today's Happy Beard Games. We checked out everything in my game room. Hopefully I have a good amount of, uh, a good balance of quality and content in this video because I'm trying to go fast, but I'm also trying to show things, so it's hard for me to keep that balance of quality and content. And I've, also I've been talking for a while, so my voice is kind of messed up and like dry also. It's been about an hour for today alone. Um, yeah. So that's about it for today's Happy Beard Games. If there's something you want to see more in detail, let me know that in the comment section below because I can do a closer upper little look at that thing specifically and tell you more about that specifically in a YouTube short or Instagram, which I would prefer the Instagram um, pictures or video, and I can just link it to you and find out more about that directly from me. All right, everybody, thanks for watching once again. Please be sure to leave us a like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends. You can donate on my coffee page and you can check me out more right here on Hybrid Games and YouTube.com when I live stream on Fridays at around 5 o'clock Pacific time and Wednesdays at 5 o'clock Pacific time. So thank you for watching once again. All right, everybody. Bye.